Hello YouTube and welcome. This is Frick here and I'm going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a long time and that is create a collection of Flight Simulator X or FSX Let's Play or Let's Fly videos. As you can see right now I am sitting inside one of the aircraft in FSX. It is the default Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Uh, I chose to go with a default aircraft for this first flight because I wanted to keep the aircraft that I was flying is familiar to any user who has ever flown or played FSX uh, instead of using one of the add-on aircraft from Carinado or something like that. So that is why I have chosen to go with the, the default Cessna 172 Skyhawk. You can also see right now that everything is cold and dark. Um, I like to keep the game as realistic as possible and with that I always start up my aircraft as it, from the cold and dark uh, position and also I in my ATC window have disabled the text so I have to actually listen and write down uh, what the ATC information has given me and on top of that I like to get my frequencies not through the game by having it auto select the frequency that I need but I choose to go to um, websites and other resources to get the frequencies as if I would have to do that for real life so again I try to keep this as realistic as possible I also use checklists for all my flights uh, to keep everything as realistic as possible for this video collection I'm gonna be flying mostly smaller aircraft because I want to keep everything as if it were a scenario of where you're just flying with a private pilot license with that I'm gonna be doing mostly VFR flights I will maybe do some IFR flights if you guys want and I'll even branch out to some larger aircraft if you guys want to see that uh, but for right now I'm gonna stick with some of the smaller aircraft and we're just gonna be flying uh, general aviation aircraft as if we have our private pilot license um, and so with that we're gonna be flying mostly via visual flight rules VFR um, for this flight I am at Fargo Hector International Airport in Fargo, North Dakota, and I'm going to be flying to Grand Forks International Airport, which is about 70 miles north of Fargo. For my flight, I am going to be doing VOR navigation for my instruments, but I'm also going to be using the interstate as a reference point, uh, as this is visual flight rules, so I'm going to have some reference points on the ground that I'm going to use also to maintain uh, proper flight headings and uh, direction. Since the airplane is cold and dark, before I start rambling on too much more, uh, let's get this started and then I can explain when we're in flight uh, some of the other things that I would like to do with this collection of videos and also provide some other information on how I try to make it as realistic as possible. Uh, however, Right away, let's get the aircraft started and let's get into the air. So, we are in the cold and dark position with the default Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Uh, I got the checklist in front of me and normally what you would do actually is before you actually start any of the, the pre-start checklists or the startup checklists or anything like that, you would do an outside inspection of the aircraft. This outside inspection would include checking the tires, it would check all the flight controls to make sure all the flight controls are working, which you can see I'm turning them right now. You would do that by hand, however. It would check the cables that are used to uh, move the flight controls to make sure there's no damage to them and to make sure that the aircraft visually checks out is a safe flying working condition. Uh, also you would sump some of the fuel out to make sure there's no moisture, uh, no contaminants within the fuel, and other things like that. However, for the sake of this video, we're going to assume that that outside inspection is complete on the aircraft, and we are going to start with the pre-start checklist. Pre-start checklist, parking brake set. You can see that I have the parking brake pulled out. Throttle closed. It's not in up here. Uh, but you can see I do have it pulled out in the closed position. Magneto starter switch is in the off position right here. Battery and alternator master switches are off as well as the avionics master switch is off. Fuel pump switch is also off. Mixture fuel flow is in the cutoff position which is pulled all the way out. So mixture is in the cutoff position. Battery switch, we will turn that on. 
eventually you would start to hear a hissing or kind of a whining noise. That's the electronics and battery warming up within the aircraft. Panel lights, you can turn those on. I am going to turn those on just because I would like to have the extra light as it may get dark towards the end of this flight. Flight controls, you would then check them. Uh, to do that, you make sure all the flight controls are loose, free and correct. Also, you would look outside the window and you would see to make sure that when you're turning the yoke that the ailerons are working. You can see the left aileron working there. If we look out the right window, you can kind of see that other aileron going down. And if we look behind us, let's uh, get a good back view. You can see that the elevator uh, moves as well as the rudder when I move the rudder. So the flight controls check out. Flaps, you want to make sure those are up. When we looked out the window, you can see that the flaps are in the up position. Also, you can verify that by looking at the flap switch, and that is up. Fuel quantity, you would check that. I have 100% in both tanks. Fuel selector, have that at both, which I have it at both. Normally, you would have it at either just left or right fuel tank uh, when it is parked. Uh, I must have had it at both. It happens. Uh, where am I? Avionic switch. We can turn that on now that our batteries are on. So I'm going to move my camera down there, turn on my avionic switch, and you can see all my avionics are lighting up. Check weather. We can get that from the ATIS information. Um, before I do that, I'm actually going to start up the engine just because I want to get my alternator working. So um, I'm going to go through a few more checklist items before I do check ATIS and also request clearance. I'm going to make sure my engine is started before I do that. Transponder, you want that set to standby, which it is, and it's on 1200 for the squat code. And beacon, we'll turn that on. The beacon should always be on before you start the propeller. That just gives information um, to people to know that uh, you are going to be starting your engine and they'll be able to see that that flashing light. Now with the beacon being on, uh, the pre-start checklist is complete. Moving to the startup checklist. Area and or the engine and propeller area, you want to make sure that's clear. Normally in a Cessna 172 or any other general aviation aircraft, you would open the window and call out and yell all clear um, so they know to get out of the way since you are going to be starting the engine. Next thing that checklist calls for is opening the throttle one fourth of an inch, which you can see I'm moving the throttle down there. Put it in a fourth of an inch. Mixture, we want that all the way in full rich, which it is now pushed all the way in to full rich. Fuel pump, which is right here. I'm gonna put that to the on position and you can hear it come on. And magneto switch to start. So we'll pull that over. And now you can see that the engine is started. Now we can pull back the throttle to idle. And then we need to turn on our alternator switch, which is right down here. And now we're not running just off batteries, but we're using the alternator as well uh, to power those batteries. So we'll make sure we always have constant power. Next, you can monitor your oil pressure and levels. Uh, you can see everything is in the green right here. But it's still fairly low because the engine is just starting and warming up. Engine instruments, you can check the rest of them. Fuel pump switch, we can now turn that off. So I will turn the fuel pump off. And annunciator lights, you want to check. And those are right here. Uh, those are basically your warning lights. And as you can see, I don't have any on. I might get an oil pressure light eventually if I stay in idle too long. It's just because the engine's in idle once I add some throttle uh, that would go away. So with that, I am ready basically for a before taxi checklist. But before I do that, I am gonna get all of my radios and my avionics set for the flight that I'm choosing to do. Right away, you wanna check the ATIS information. Like I said, I don't like using the ATC window to automatically tune to ATIS or to ground or anything like that. I like tuning them as if um, I'm in a real aircraft and you're not going to have an automatic tune setting. 
So what I do is I go ahead and write down all the frequencies that I'm going to be needing, and I'm going to show you later on in the flight how I get those frequencies. But for right now, I know that my ATIS information for Fargo is 124.5 for the frequency. So I am going to set that, get a better view here. And so 124.4. Oh, decimal 5. Switch that over, and we'll listen to the ATIS. Alright, so what we gathered from that is we have Mike. Mike is the most updated ATIS broadcast, so when you're getting your clearances and whatnot, you would tell the controller, I have Mike. That lets them know you've listened to the ATIS information, and if Mike is the most up-to-date one, they would know that, and so by saying you have Mike, they know that you have the most up-to-date ATIS information. Winds are 177 at 5, so 5 knots at 177. Uh, that's pretty much straight out of the south, which means we should be taken off out of runway 18, which uh, they also announced in the ATIS information that runway 18 is in use. Uh, no clouds are below 2,000 feet. Since we're flying VFR rules, we're going to have to avoid clouds. You can't fly in them under visual flight rules. So we are going to have to kind of keep looking for clouds to make sure that we are either avoiding them to the side, under, or above. Lastly, uh, altimeter is at 3021, so we need to set that. As you can see right now, it's at about 29 or 9 or 2, so we need to change that to 3021 is what the altimeter setting is. And that's right there. And also, you can confirm that not only by looking at 30.21 right here in the altimeter area, but you can also look at the elevation. Right now we're at 900 feet, and I know ahead of time that Fargo, KFAR, or Hector International Airport is at 900 feet elevation. So that helps me ensure that the barometric pressure is correctly set. Next I'm going to set up all my radios that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using uh, ground tower and some of those radios right away. So I'm going to come here and start setting the radio frequencies that I want. Ground frequency is 121.9 for Fargo. So we'll switch that in and move it from the standby to the active frequency. And then for the standby frequency, I'm going to turn it to tower, which is 133.8. Because after the taxi, I'm going to have to tune to tower so instead of fidgeting with it later on I can set it ahead of time it's another nice reason to know your frequencies uh, the next one I'm gonna tune in is the approach and departure frequency for Fargo which is 120 decimal 4 so I'm gonna do that in my COM2 panel so 120 decimal 4 so I have that set and for the other frequency, I could tune to whatever. Uh, depending on where I'm flying around here, I may have to contact Minneapolis Center. I don't believe for this flight, flight from Fargo to Grand Forks, I need to. I believe I'm going to be in approach control the whole time. Uh, but what I'm going to do for this second COM to the standby frequency is actually turn to the Grand Forks ATIS, because as I approach that, I'm going to need to get that ATIS information. The frequency for that is 119.4, so we'll get that set. 119.4 set. So I have my Fargo Ground, Fargo Tower, Fargo Approach, and also the Grand Forks ATIS information. The next thing I'm going to set is my VOR navigation. Uh, I'm going to set the frequencies for the Fargo VOR in NAV2 and then for the Grand Forks VOR in NAV1. 
The Fargo VOR is 116 decimal 2, so it's already at 116, and just put in decimal 2, put that to the active, and we should see that it connected to the Fargo VOR right here. The next one is the Grand Forks VOR, that's 114 decimal 3, so let's put that in. And I put that to the active, 114 decimal 3, and as you can see, the NAV1 VOR, or NAV1 uh, Omni Bearing Selector, um, VOR1 Indicator, excuse me, uh, did not move. That's because we are out of range for it. Uh, once we get to altitude and get a little closer to Grand Forks, it will connect. Um, but as of right now, we're too far, so we will initially be flying off the Fargo VOR. Um, I know to get to Grand Forks, I need to fly at a heading of 340 from the Fargo VOR. And again, I will show you later how I uh, discovered that. So that way, if you decide to fly with VOR navigation and use some of the aeronautical charts that I use, um, you would be able to fly that same way. So now we have our radio set. We have our nav avionics set. I'm not going to be using an ADF. With the ADF, you use uh, non-directional beacons, and then the ADF to get the the ADF is automatic direction finder. I'm not going to be using those. The DME I'm going to have set to uh, nav one. DME is distance measuring equipment. I'm going to have that set to nav one. So once I connect to the Grand Forks VOR, I'm going to know how far I have to fly, and then we'll keep our squat code, and we're not going to do anything with autopilot. With that, we are ready to taxi. Since we want to fly to Grand Forks, that's to the north, so we are going to do our before taxi checklist. Before taxi checklist, we want our nav lights on, taxi lights on, um, heading indicator set, which we basically have our heading indicator set, and instruments, normal operation, they're all in normal operation, radio and uh, avionics checked and set, and they are all checked and set. Autopilot set and off. I'm not going to be setting it because I'm not going to be using it for this flight. And then request taxi clearance. So if I open up the ATC window, you'll see that I automatically went to Fargo Ground. That is because I have Fargo Ground as my active COM1 frequency. And so we are going to request a departure to the north. Fargo Ground, Cessna, Golf, Bravo, Alpha, Foxtrot, Mike with Mike. Request taxi for takeoff, departure to the north. Cessna Golf, Bravo, Nelson, Foxtrot, Mike, taxi 2 and hold short of runway 18 via taxiway Golf, Bravo, Golf, Bravo, Bravo 1, contact tower on 133.8 when ready. Alright, so we got our taxi clearance and we can acknowledge that. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 18 via taxiway Golf, Bravo, Golf, Bravo, Bravo 1, Cessna, Alpha, Foxtrot, Mike. All right, so we got our taxi clearance. Uh, we are taxiing to runway 18 via Golf, Bravo, Golf, Bravo, Bravo 1. Um, what I could do is if I did not know the taxiways for Fargo, I could turn on this progressive taxi. You'll see the arrows and they point you to where you need to go. However, I again like to keep everything as realistic as possible. So what I use are airport diagrams to try to get uh, the, the taxiway information as if I were flying in a real plane I would use that and to to know where I need a taxi as well as using the the taxiway markings uh, so I'm gonna be using them I'm not gonna be using the progressive taxi but we have our clearance let's get moving so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna do a pushback or anything like that I'm just gonna turn us to the left since there are no aircraft over there and let's get the throttle We'll uh, turn on our, our taxi checklist, parking brake, we need to release that. Control period does that. You can see that the parking brake warning went away. And now we can taxi to the assigned runway. So I'm gonna give us some slight throttle and I'm gonna turn sharply using rudder and also some differential brake to get a nice sharp turn going so I can get us onto the taxiway. The taxi, taxi checklist 
calls for uh, a speed of a max of 20 knots, so we'll try to adhere to that. However, for this video, I probably will taxi a little quicker than what is recommended, uh, just because it can get a little boring if you're taxiing the entire time. For my taxi, I am using, uh, or for all of my flight, I should say, I'm using SciTech uh, controls, so I'm not using a keyboard command to do all the, the taxiing and flying, but I actually have a SciTech Cessna yoke and rudder pedal, throttle quadrant, and trim wheel, so I will be using those uh, for my flight controls. So right now, for this taxiway, I'm actually using my feet to taxi. <clears throat> Sorry if I get a little distracted when ground control starts talking. I try listening to who it's to to make sure it's not for me. Habit, I guess. <clears throat> so we are actually on the south side of the Fargo International Airport. We need to get to the north side. Uh, so it is a relatively long taxi. Again, later on I am going to show you how I know where I am going on this taxiway. As you can see right now, we're coming up to some taxi signs. Black on yellow, or yellow on black is where you're at. So you can see that we are on taxiway Bravo. I keep turning. I'm getting a little quicker than 20 knots, but that's all right because I want to get us there. I'll slow down some just so I don't tip over the aircraft, though. So when you're looking at taxiway signs, uh, one one saying that I kind of remember is yellow on black is where you're at. So once we get to the next taxiway sign, um, when you see yellow on black, uh, that is the taxiway you're on. Black on yellow uh, is where you can follow to go to a various taxiway. So right here, we're going straight. Yellow on black, you can see the yellow on black is B for Taxiway Bravo, and then B3 is this one if I were to turn on to that. That's simply how to read those. Um, there are other signs that you can see. Uh, runways are always marked in red and white. Uh, we will actually be crossing a runway coming up here, uh, so you'll be able to see that. When you're taxiing, normally you would have to hold short at all runways unless given specific clearance in your taxi instructions to cross. Unfortunately, FSX does not simulate that well. They do not make you hold short at non-active runways. Um, but for realistic practice, I'm just going to do a stop once we get to that runway and pretend it as if I uh, waited for clearance to get clearance to cross it. Coming up on another taxiway off here, you can see that's taxiway Echo, and we are still on Bravo. Getting close to that runway, you can see uh, the red and white right there. So I'm going to start slowing down using my brake. And here you can see the, the hold short line is right here. And we stopped at the hold short line. Normally you would uh, wait for clearance or contact to get clearance to cross the runway. But again, the game does not do that. So I just look to make sure there are no aircraft and we are going to cross that runway. <clears throat> Getting close to the north side of the airport and getting closer to our destination runway, which is runway 18, which will fly us to the south. Try to get there relatively quick. Bumped up the speed a little bit. Fargo ground, orbit 7138, request taxi to parking. Orbit 7138. Start slowing down. So our final instructions were from Bravo to Bravo 1, which is Bravo 1 is right there. So we can slow down and start to uh, take this turn for Bravo 1. And I can see the hold short line there and the runway up here. So what I'm going to do is actually get to the right side and set my aircraft 
for doing a run up of the engine. So what you do is you turn your aircraft slightly towards the wind, set the parking brake, and then we can do our engine run up or the before takeoff checklist. So parking brake set, which I have set. Fuel quantity, check that again, just make sure you have proper fuel, which I do. Fuel selector valve, both, which again is at the both, uh, has both selected. Throttle, idle, mixture, rich, alternator switch, verify that is on, which it is. And then throttle, we're going to bump that up to 1800 RPM. So I'm going to slowly boost in the throttle, and you can hear the engine running up, and you can see the RPMs down here starting to go up. We're going to get that to about 1800 RPM, which is about there. That's a little short right there. With that, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to check your magnetos. So if I come right here, this is your magneto switch. Right now it's on both. If I take the switch and move it to left, you're going to see a drop in RPM kind of slowly see it drop right there it should be about 50 that's checking to make sure that the magnetos are working so that verifies that the right magneto is working because it dropped um, some of my rpm go back to the both I'm back at 1800 rpm and then we'll switch it to the right magneto and you can see that the rpm dropped again so both my magnetos are working some aircraft have carburetor heat. You would also test that here. If I were to pull the carburetor heat, you would see a drop in RPM of about 100 usually. Sometimes, I mean, it varies. It could be 150 or something like that. Also, when you have the throttle up, you want to make sure your ammeter is working uh, to make sure that you're getting amps from your um, altimeter. Throttle, once that is done, you can set that back to idle. Oil temperature. Uh, check to make sure that that is in the green, which it is. You can see the oil pressure slightly dipped once I went back to idle. Elevator trim, we'll set that for takeoff. So my elevator trim is right here. I'm going to set that using my trim wheel down to the takeoff position. Flaps, we want to make sure they're set at 0 or 10 degrees. Flight controls, free and correct. You want to make sure there's nothing uh, that obscures your use to use the, the flight controls. So I don't have any bags or anything down by my rudder pedals or anything like that. And they are working. Radios and avionics, you want to make sure those are set, which we know they are. Landing lights, we will turn those on. Taxi lights will come off. Strobe light will go on. Pedo heat we will turn on because it is winter and uh, we don't want to get icing in our pedo tubes. Transponder on and it's still at 1200 for my squat code and now we can request takeoff clearance. So I'm going to come back. I'm still tuned to ground. Here again I could do the auto tuning but I've already set my frequency so I'll just switch the standby to active and you will see that now I'm tuned to Fargo Tower and not quite close enough to the uh, hold short line to get my clearance. Now I am, so I can request takeoff clearance VFR from Fargo Tower. Fargo Tower, Cessna Golf Bravo Alpha Foxtrot, Mike, ready at runway 18, departure to the north. Cessna Golf Bravo Alpha Foxtrot, Mike, cleared for takeoff, runway 18, north, departure approved. All right, we got our clearance. We'll acknowledge it. And we'll taxi into takeoff position. All right, we are on the runway and we are ready for takeoff. So takeoff checklist, smoothly increase thrust to full, brakes release, and our decision speed is gonna be at 55 knots and our rotate speed is gonna be at 65 knots. So we're gonna slowly push in the throttle, one, 1,000, two, 2,000, three, 3,000. We got full throttle. 
The aircraft will want to veer to the left some because of your propeller fi factor and thrust. Uh, so you just correct with rudder. I'm increasing, I'm at 65 knots. I can slowly start to rotate and the aircraft lifted off and we are in the air. We want to maintain a positive pitch of 10 to 15 degrees, which I'm at right now. Um, trim for climb to maintain. Also, you just want to touch the brakes. And engine instruments checked and retract the flaps if they're set, which the flaps are not set. So I do not need to uh, do anything with the flaps. We're still flying at a heading of south, so we should be still flying right over the runway. Starting to drift a little to the left. And that's because of the propeller factor and thrust. Now I'm going to slowly start turning us because we are going to be flying to the north. So we're going to put in a 20 degree bank and start turning to the west. up on west so I'm gonna slowly start to level out overshot it a little my bad getting a little too much this is for us so the frequency change is approved so what they're telling us is we can contact Fargo approach on 120.4 I've already got that set so I'm just gonna switch to com 2 and now I'm gonna request a flight following they're going to give me a squat code with the flight following uh, so they can monitor my flight. And if I were to crash or anything, they would know where my last known position was. Also, you can see that I'm doing a little bit of a right bank. I'm going to get on a north heading. So we can start heading to Grand Forks. Also, you'll notice that I'm going to actually start to level off. I'm going to fly only at about 3,000 feet, so let's uh, start leveling off. Got to pitch down, build up some of that airspeed. Fargo departure, American Pacific, Niner 860 is climbing through 1,600 for 1,000. American Pacific, Niner 860, Fargo departure. Control, Roger. so I'm going to pull back my throttle a little bit because I'm going to get to a cruising speed. American also going to pull back my mixture a little bit, which you can see. Since we are slightly higher, but I'm still increasing. I'm kind of blowing my suggested airspace, but that's all right. It's a little harder when you're talking the whole time, I've discovered. Here you can see the interstate that takes us all the way to Grand Forks. Uh, so we're going to be using that visually as uh, one of our references for our flight. Also, you can see I connected to the Grand Forks VOR, so if we uh, get lined up with that, we can see that we need to fly at a heading of about 340, which is uh, what I said earlier that we would need to fly at. So we have that going. Also, we still need to uh, request our flight following, so I am going to request a flight following, and they're going to give me a squat code now that I kind of am slowly leveling out and getting to... Uh, straight and level flight, so we're going to request that. Fargo approach, Cessna, Golf, Bravo, Alpha, Foxtrot, Mike, is type Cessna, Skyhawk, 3 miles northwest of Fargo, request flight following. Cessna, Golf, Bravo, Alpha, Foxtrot, Mike, Fargo approach, squawk 5357. So we need to squawk 5357. They'll contact or acknowledge it. Foxtrot, Mike, radar contact, 3 miles northwest of Fargo, 3100, altimeter 3021. 3021 is set, and they gave us our correct altitude so we can acknowledge radar contact. Copy. Cessna, Alpha, Foxtrot, Mike. So now we have flight following through Fargo Approach. Uh, they'll also hand us off to Grand Forks Approach as we get closer. Pull back my ELT throttle just a little bit so I can descend to 3,000 feet because that's the altitude that I want to fly at right now that I have chosen. Getting 
closer so he can start to bump up. And we'll pull up the nose just a little bit and start to level us out. One thing to remember is you trim typically for your airspeed and you use your throttle typically for uh, altitude climbing and descending. So once I get the aircraft in straight and level flight, which I'm getting it pretty close to, I have it trimmed at an airspeed of about 110 knots, so slightly over, which is a good cruising airspeed for the 172. The vertical speed indicator is relatively at zero or level, and my altitude is not really climbing. So I'm in straight and level flight because I'm maintaining a heading. You can see that my wings are at about equidistance from the horizon. So that's how you know that you are on straight and level flight. There are some clouds to the east and south, but we are avoiding them, so they should be no factor right now for us. Skies look clear ahead of us. So right now, we are basically on our heading to Grand Forks and just need to simply fly there. Um, you can see that it is 57.9 nautical miles away. We can tell that because we have connected to the VOR in Grand Forks. We are flying in that heading, and the VOR is selected to NAV-1, which is our NAV-1, or the Grand Forks VOR. So that's how you can know how far away you are from a desired VOR. Not all VORs are on the airport. In Grand Forks, it is right by the airport, so I know that I'm literally about 57.2 nautical miles away from the Grand Forks International Airport. However, the Fargo Airport, I know I'm not 16.3 nautical miles away. I haven't flown that far. Uh, that is because the Fargo VOR is actually on the south side of Fargo, so it's about 10 miles away from the Fargo Airport, and that's why there's a the difference there. So I'll switch back to uh, my NAV-1. We're going to be following the interstate right here for the most part, using that as visual reference for visual flight rules, but we're also going to be flying uh, VO, via VOR navigation. So I need to turn to a slightly better heading. I'm at a heading of 3.3. I need to get to a heading of about 3.40 degrees, so I'm just going to put in a little bit of bank. Uh, since it's only a slight correction, I don't need to put anything great in to turn the aircraft. Um, get that going and we're nearing 340 so I'm just gonna roll out and level out and now we are heading at about 340 you can see we lost just a tiny bit of altitude anytime you bank unless you're pulling back on the rudder you are gonna lose some altitude that's because you lose lift uh, because it changes your lift from true vertical with straight and level flight to more of a horizontal or um, offset angle because the wings are banked. With this, I am going to quick show you now some of the web pages I use to plan out my flights in Flight Simulator X. I'm going to show you how I got my frequencies ahead of time. I'm going to show you also how I knew that I had to fly at a heading of 340 using the VOR navigation. So I'm going to show you some of the websites that I use to fly and plan out my flights in Flight Simulator X. So the first website I like to go to when I'm planning out a flight in Flight Simulator X is the Flight Simulator X database, or fsxdb.com. Uh, this website is really good at providing in-game frequencies, airport information, and things like that uh, for Flight Simulator X. Right away when you go to the home page, which we're at right now, you could go to the airport section and search. Uh, you could do an advanced search, popular airports, recently viewed airports, and whatnot. Uh, there's also news on FSX, or you can, uh, th there's various things that you can search. However, I normally just go to the quick search bar right up here and enter the code for the airport that uh, I'm flying to or are going to be flying out of. So right now we're flying out of Fargo, uh, and the code for that is KFAR, or KFAR, so I'm just going to type that in and hit enter. And then you can see that it takes us to the Hector International, KFAR, Fargo, North Dakota, United States, uh, 
information page. The most important section in this page is this airport details right here. Uh, here you'll find information on your runway, radios, ILS, VOR, uh, non-directional beacons or NDBs and parking uh, information. Uh, normally what I look at is the radio section. Here you can see that it's got all the in-game frequencies for the various radios for that airport. So if you need to contact the ATIS, you can contact it via 124.5 or your ground frequency is 121.9, tower 133.8. Here you can get all the frequencies. I personally do not like to use the auto-generated frequencies that the ATC window does where it'll automatically tune you to the next frequency uh, because in real life you don't have that option you have to know the frequencies so I prefer to come in here and get the frequencies and then write them on a separate piece of paper so I have them as I would in real flight uh, it just adds another level of realism to me and to me makes the game a little more fun uh, also if you were flying a ILS or through IFR ratings um, and then needed to use an ILS, uh, the information is here. And same with VOR information. So uh, I'm going to be flying to Grand Forks through VOR navigation. Here you can see that it's got the Fargo VOR number or frequency 116.2 and then also the Grand Forks frequency 114.3. Uh, it's also got non-directional beacon information and then also information on the parking. If you guys are interested, I can do a more in-depth review of some of these websites that I use. Uh, if you're interested, uh, I find them fun. Uh, they give another added level of realism. But for right now, I'm going to move on to the next website that I go to, which is airnav.com. AirNav.com is similar to the FX, FSX database, however this is information uh, that's all real world. Uh, the information that you're going to find in AirNav.com is very similar to what you're going to get out of an airport facility directory. Um, so right away you come to AirNav.com and the first, the home page is just like this. You click airports on the top. <laughs> And then again, you can I enter the identifier for uh, your airport. Uh, again, it's going to be KFAR, and we'll hit enter. And now you can see that it takes us to a real KFAR Hector International information page. The FAA information effective is effective for 13 November 2014 on this page, so it is updated, and it is. Uh, real world information. However, you will, will notice that most of the information between real world and FSX is the same. Here you can see the ATIS uh, frequency is 124.5. If we go back to FSX, we can see that the ATIS is 124.5. This is because the game tried to make all the frequencies and the airports and everything the same. However, some are different because they have since been updated since the game's release, which is understandable. Other information you can get here is elevation of the airport. Uh, like I said, or showed earlier, you can get frequency information right here. Airport operations is a little more applicable to real life, but it's fun information to look at. Uh, also again, it's got VOR information. You can see that the frequency 116.2 also matches the frequency 116.2 in the game. The next thing in here that you can look at is the airport diagram. This is actually quite beneficial when it comes to Flight Simulator X. If I were to open it up, you'll see that it's an airport di diagram of Hector International Airport. Again, it's got some of the frequencies here, but most important, I find, is the runway information and also the taxiway information, since the taxiways, for the most part, tend to line up in the game with the real world. Uh, if you know where you are, you can uh, figure out how to get to where you need to go without having to use uh, the automatic taxiing or progressive taxiing within Flight Simulator X. So just say uh, we came from the south and we landed on runway 36 and we exited on taxiway B3 and we wanted to make our way to the terminal ramp. They may give us a taxi clearance of Bravo, Echo, down to Alpha, and then finally on Tango. So here you would be able to see how 
to get to that location from where you are. Or if you want to take off from runway 1A and you're right here, they may give you a taxi clearance of Charlie 3, Charlie, Bravo, Bravo 1. So here you would see that you would take your plane from Charlie 3 across Charlie, which is here, and then this is Bravo, so you would go north on Bravo to Bravo 1, then you'd hold short at runway 1A, get your clearance and take off. So this is another great informate informative tool that I like to use for planning out things in Flight Simulator X. The next is skyvector.com. Skyvector is basically a digital version of aeronautical charts and sectional maps that you would use for flying. There is a lot of information where I could spend a long time explaining aeronautical charts and sectionals. However, the basics are you can find your airport so right here we're at Fargo, North Dakota, and you can see the dotted blue lines around it. It just means it's a towered airport. Below that you'll see this bigger circle right here, and it's got the directions notched into it. That's your VOR information. If you look in the middle, you'll see this right here, which is where the VOR is located in real life. It's also got the information on the VOR. So Fargo, it's 116.2, which is the frequency. The next thing you'll see are these blue lines coming out of most of the VORs. These blue lines give you basically your highway in the sky. So what this blue line is showing is right here you'll see this 340 degrees. And if we come up to the north we'll see that Grand Forks or Destination Airport is up here. So what this tells you is that if you take off from Fargo and then connect to the Fargo VOR 116.2 and Using that, fly at a heading of 340 degrees. It'll start taking you directly towards the next VOR, which is the Grand Forks International or Grand Forks VOR. If you are unable to uh, connect to your next VOR because the distance is too great, this will get you going there. So it's a great way to navigate uh, using VORs. Then once you get up, you can see that uh, view our information for Grand Forks. Uh, 114.3 is the channel or the frequency. Channel is 90. You don't need to worry about channels. Uh, that's more for military use. But then it shows you the location of the Grand Forks VOR. You can see that the airport is right here, Grand Forks International. Again, it's a towered airport because it's got the blue dashes around it and it gives some of the information on Grand Forks International right here. Um, again, it's this is a very basic overview of some of the, the websites that I like to use when I'm planning out flights in Flight Simulator X. If you like this information, if you would like more in-depth information on how to read all of the jumble that is an aeronautical chart, uh, please let me know and I'd love to uh, go much deeper, much further into aeronautical charts and some of the things that you can use to make your flight simulator X experience more realistic. Alright, so I hope you found that information uh, to be good and informative. I, you know, like I said, those websites are websites that I like to use in order to add realism to the game because uh, if you're flying with your real pi private pilot license or you're doing any kind of real flight you're gonna have to know your frequencies ahead of time you're gonna have to know your VOR locations ahead of time unless you have a sectional map within your plane which you should have and also the frequencies you can get through like an airport facility directory or something like that which you should have in your plane as well uh, but to simulate it, you can get them online uh, through some of those websites. So I hope you found that information informative. As you can see right now, uh, we have continued to be or continued to flown towards uh, Grand Forks. Uh, we are about 38 nautical miles away from it now, so roughly about halfway. You can see that we do have clouds off to our east, so we have been avoiding those everything to our west and north however seems pretty clear you can still see the interstate down here as a visual reference but you can also tell that uh, through our VOR navigation that we're still on path to intercept that VOR flying at our current heading we're still straight and level roughly at 3,000 feet and we're flying still at about 110 knots 
So the flight is going quite well right now. Uh, a few things I would like to talk to you now uh, about are, one, my weather. Uh, I am not using uh, default weather from FSX. I do have additional programs installed. One of those is uh, Rex Essentials Plus Overdrive and the Rex Texture Pack. Uh, that adds new cloud textures and is a whole new weather engine for FSX. Um, with it, you can use real-time weather or you can do randomly generated weather or kind of create your own weather uh, for a flight within FSX. I have chosen to do random weather. Uh, I could have done real world weather um, here in uh, from Fargo to Grand Forks, but it's not the best day out. I mean, it's not terribly bad outside, but I, I chose to go with a random weather. So I chose a random weather. Uh, I'll show you an image of what the weather kind of looks like through Rex right here. So you can see it's mostly a high pressure day. Uh, there are some clouds, uh, and those clouds are to the east. There is a system um, close by, but for the most part, it's a nice high pressure day, uh, nice flying conditions. Uh, so that is what I'm using for weather and for some of my textures. Also, you can see that the ground does look much different than the default uh, ground in Flight Simulator X. Uh, that's because I have Orbix installed. ORBX. Orbix is a texture graphics pack uh, for Flight Simulator X that adds a lot nicer looking uh, ground scenery. Uh, for the most part it's pretty pretty nice. I like it. Uh, it does add a little more trees than there realistically are in some regions. Uh, as in North Dakota there's not a whole lot of trees. So there are a lot more trees but for the most part, the ground looks relatively nice. Um, so I am using that Orbix pack. Uh, another thing I'm using is, if you notice, I can nicely uh, move some of my cameras around. Uh, I'm using the Easy Dock add-on, which you can see up here. And Easy Dock allows you to customize camera views uh, for various aircraft or whatever aircraft in Flight Simulator X and it works for both the default aircraft and also additional add-on aircraft. I really like it and I recommend anybody who is using FSX regardless if you're flying with a yoke rudder pedal and all that additional accessories or flying straight with a keyboard mouse or even a controller I recommend using Easy Dock because it allows for quick navigation uh, or head movements when you're inside the aircraft. So if I wanna, I have it all mapped out, all the, the view buttons mapped out on my SciTech yoke. So if I wanna look to the left, I can just look to the left and I have uh, preset views to, to look out to the left. I have a view for pilot mode also to look out the right. Or if I want to look at the instruments, I can look at all the instruments. I can zoom in to the main instruments or the avionics, go down to the light switches and everything like that, and uh, back up to pilot mode. So that's how I'm able to get some of those nice streamline uh, transitions looking at all the various controls in the aircraft. So I'd recommend using Easy Dock for anybody. We are still 30 nautical miles away from our location. Weather is still clear. We still have a good heading. Um, just corrected a little bit for that. Our altitude has dipped a couple feet below uh, 3,000. We're maybe uh, 40 feet below, which is fine. We're within 100 feet. That's perfectly fine. And our VSI is up about 11 feet, so you can see that we have climbed up just a tiny bit closer to 3,000 feet. So we'll continue to do that. Um, attitude indicator is showing level flight. If we look out our windows, we can see that there's equidistance between the wing tip, tips and the horizon, which is another indicator of straight and level flight. We've maintained our same distance between our dash and the horizon. 
uh, which shows that we're not in a climb or anything too. Some of the basic visual flight rules uh, that you would have to look at if you were flying, uh, say with a real private pilot license. We still have the interstate below us and are on a relatively close heading to Grand Forks VR VORs. Uh, we've drifted off a little bit to the west so we're not straight anymore with uh, 340 heading being needed but we're relatively close. One thing you could do is use a flight computer to calculate um, the correction that you would have to have for wind speed uh, and wind direction and whatnot so if you need to crab slightly your aircraft into the wind to get to your location you could do that uh, I am not doing that right now uh, I can show you in later flights possibly how you can use something like that so we are 27.6 nautical miles away now from Grand Forks once we get a little closer I uh, will start my descent Grand Forks Air Force Base or not Air Force Base excuse me but Grand Forks International Airport is if I can find it in my I have an airport directory facility directory here so I use that for flying in game or in real life uh, but Grand Forks International Airport is at an altitude of 845 845 feet so we will descend to about 1800 feet once we get a little closer so we're about a thousand feet higher than the airport normally when you're flying uh, and you enter a traffic pattern at an airport you enter at about a thousand feet above airport elevation so for Fargo it's 900 feet you would enter the pattern at about 1900 feet then um, Grand Forks Air International Airport is 845 feet so you'd enter at about 1850 feet or 1800 or 1900 relatively close uh, to within a thousand foot elevation or altitude from from that desired airport also we can uh, start getting set for landing in Grand Forks so we can also change our radios we no longer need Fargo ground we no longer need Fargo Tower so for our COM 1 what we can do is we can set Grand Forks Tower and Grand Forks ground Grand Forks ground is 124.57 for the frequency so let's uh, put that in 124.57 so now we have the Fargo crown frequency here. Switch that to active and change to tower in the standby, which is 118.4. Is that 1,700? Climbing 10,000. Orbit 7139. Fargo departure. Roger. Altimeter 3021. 118.4 is now our active, which is Fargo Tower, or Grand Forks Tower, excuse me. 124.57 is our ground frequency for Grand Forks. 120.4 is Fargo Approach. So eventually we're going to have to tune to Grand Forks Approach. They're going to give us a handoff. And it looks like that frequency is 118.1. So I'm just going to preemptively set that right here for when they approve us to hand over our control from Fargo Approach and departure to seven, Grand one, Forks three, approach and departure. Heading three, one, zero, climb and maintain one, zero, Turn right, heading three, one, zero, climb and maintain You can still one, see zero, the seven, interstate one, is right nine. here. The airport is actually off to the west of the interstate and of uh, the main city of Grand Forks. So that's why we have crossed over the interstate and are starting to uh, fly to the west some. Also, there are two airports relatively close by. One is uh, the Grand Forks Air Force Base Airport, and the other one is Grand Forks International. So you just got to make sure that you are flying to the right airport because you don't want to try to land at an Air Force Base uh, when you are a civilian aircraft trying to land at a civilian airport. Twenty-one nautical miles away, so we are 
getting close to where we should have our uh, control handed over to Grand Forks approach. We can look and see that we are getting past the clouds and the weather that was to our east. Uh, it's nice, clear skies ahead of us, except for some real high-level clouds. Some snow on the ground. Uh, it's actually pretty accurate to how it is here. There's actually a little more snow on the ground here than is indicated in game, but whatever. It, it's it's a simulation. It's a game, so you can't expect perfection, I guess. Just cross check again to make sure that we have everything set for uh, coming to Fargo. We have all our. Uh, PUR set, we have all our frequencies set, instruments are looking good, we're not climbing or descending, we're at 3,000 feet, flying straight and level on a proper heading to take us to Grand Forks International Airport. One thing I never mentioned was uh, I never verbally called out the climb out checklist or cruise checklist. Uh, tough to verbalize those because so many things are happening so quickly. So after the takeoff checklist, this is for us. So now we got our handoff to Grand Forks Approach, 118.1, so I can acknowledge the handoff first with Fargo Approach. And now we can switch and contact Grand Forks Approach. All right, altimeter setting hasn't changed. We're still at 3021. Chances are they're going to give us a heads up to look out for this Cessna coming at us. Uh, they're close to our altitude, a little below us. So we have had our handoff. I'm going to quick talk to you about the climb out checklist and cruise checklist since I never verbalized those and I probably won't do a whole lot of verbalizing of the descent and approach checklist. Uh, like I said, there's too many things happening at once to really be focusing on each step. You need to kind of go through them quickly. The climb out checklist in this aircraft, throttle set to about 2300 RPM, mixture still at rich, autopilot check and set landing lights off, which I never turned those off, so bad on me. Turn those off right there. Airspeed, 80 knots, uh, which is a good climb airspeed for the aircraft, and then uh, ATC as required, and you want a climb rate of around 700 feet, which I guess I haven't reviewed, but I would assume it was relatively close to that. Uh, the cruise checklist, you want to cruise at about 110 knots, which you can see we're at about 110 knots. Our RPM is slightly, is at about 2500 RPM, which it should be. Um, engine instruments, you just always want to do your cross checks then to make sure your instruments are good and that you're flying straight and level. So you would check and make sure everything's in the green in your cross check. You would also be checking out the windows uh, frequently more than I do in game to make sure that your wings are level and that you are level with the horizon uh, to make sure you are straight and level. Here they are uh, telling us that there's that Cessna down there that we need to report in sight so I'm going to report them in sight. We can see them. <clears throat> uh, last items on the cruise checklist, radios tuned and set, which they are, autopilot check and set if you're going to be using autopilot, which I have not been using, uh, lights as required, and en engine instruments check. So again, you're always doing your cross check. You're always uh, looking at, over your instruments to make sure that they are in the green and that everything is set properly. You're always looking out the windows, like I said, to make sure you're in straight and level flight using VFR visual flight rules. Coming up to where we do need to descend, so I'm going to go over the checklist now with you, uh, just so you can kind of hear it. Also with the approach and landing checklist, because I'm not going to verbalize those when I'm concentrating on landing. 
The descent checklist, ATIS, we want to check that. So we are going to check the ATIS information for Grand Forks. The frequency for that is 119.4. So I'm going to tune to 119.4 because we no longer need that Fargo approach frequency and go to that. Grand Forks, airport information, Sierra 21350, wind 177 at 5, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, no clouds below 20,000, temperature 3, 2 point, minus 4, altimeter 3021, ILS, runway 35 left and visual, runway 35 right in use, landing and departing runway 35 left and runway 35 right, DFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back, hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact, you have Sierra. All right, so we got our ATIS information from Grand Forks. We have Sierra. Uh, winds are at 177 at 5, so they're pretty much a non-factor. They're just slightly out of the south. ILS is using runway 35 left, and VFR is using runway 35 right. We are getting closer to Grand, our Grand Forks International Airport. Um, it will be up here. We're only 10 miles out, so I'm going to actually start my descent right now. I'm just going to pull back the throttle. Fuel selector for the descent, you want to make sure it's on both. Altimeter, you want to make sure that's checked. Radios, you want to make sure that's set. Descent speed, you want to be at about 2,000 RPM, which gives you about 100 knots in airspeed. And you want to be descending at about 700 feet a minute. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a nice, comfortable descent going. Uh, if you descend too fast, especially in a non-pressurized aircraft like this, it can become quite uncomfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm pulling back the throttle. I'm also pulling back the yoke because that's going to taper off some of my speed. I'm adding some back pressure on the yoke. And then I'm eventually going to trim out so I have about a descent rate of about 700 feet at about 100 knots in airspeed. Still going a little quick. Pull back the throttle a little more. Flaps, you want to make sure they're up and check weather on the ATIS, which we have done. I can see the raid uh, airport up here, so I'm going to quick, while I'm in my descent, contact the airport and request to land. Unfortunately, the game doesn't allow you to just go to the tower frequency, so what I have to do is go to the nearest airport list and then select the airport, Grand Forks International. I'm on tower, so I'm going to tune to tower which is 120.55 I have the wrong tower frequency because it is past that time they have two so I'm gonna tune to that 12055 Oops. and now we're gonna request a full stop landing Cessna, Golf, Bravo, Alpha, Fox, Trot, Mike, is Trot, Niner, Miles, South, with Sierra, to land. Cessna, Golf, Bravo, Alpha, Fox, Trot, Mike, Transport, Tower, fly straight in, runway 35, right, altimeter 3021. All right, we got our landing instructions. We get to fly in to runway 35 right, fly straight in. I'm going to acknowledge the pattern. Straight in, runway 35 right, Cessna, Alpha, Fox, Trot, Mike. Got a little bit of turbulence there. Like I said earlier, the airport is at about 1,800 feet, so we can slowly start to uh, add a little bit of speed in. Um, our throttle in, we don't want to increase our speed. We want to slowly start tapering that off to about 100 knots, which we have. And we're going to start to level out until we get into the glide slope, as indicated by the Vassier Pappy lights that are up ahead. <clears throat> now that we're getting closer, I am going to quick come down here, turn my landing light back on. And also, while I was down there, I need to turn the fuel pump on because you need to have that on for your approach. You can see the runways here. This is uh, runway 35 left and runway 35 right. Left is used for ILS landings right now. 
according to the ATIS and right is used for VFR and since we're flying VFR that is the one that we were cleared to land with still about six miles out in a little bit of a descent but not too much we're still at about that 1800 foot mark got our landing clearance so I'm gonna acknowledge that also we're getting close enough I'm gonna put in my first detent of flaps we're gonna taper off some more airspeed we want to get to about 85 knots which you can see we're at about 85 knots now a little bit of throttle we're going slightly slower trim the aircraft get a nice heading with the runway and now we just wait to get a little closer eventually we are going to want a descent rate of about 400 feet per minute uh, with uh, when we're on the final, final glide slope we're still low, so we still need to intercept that glide slope. Getting a little closer, so I'm actually going to put in the second detent of flaps. So now we're at 20 degrees of flaps. You're going to see we raise our nose a little bit. That's just bleeding off some of that speed. And now we're at about 75 knots. It's going to speed up a little to about 80. We're still high, so... We don't want to climb or descend too much until we get within that glide slope. Which we're getting closer to. We're about 300 feet <coughs> below the pattern entry, but we can see that we're getting within the glide slope of runway 35 left, and now we got our first white light for 35 right. So eventually we'll intercept the second one, <clears throat> and then we can get into our final descent rate of 400, negative 400 feet per minute. Any time now. There it is. So we are in the glide slope. We got our two whites and our two reds. So we're going to get our descent rate of about 400 feet per minute. We are on final, so I'm going to put in my final <clears throat> flap setting. I could do only 20 degrees of flap if I want, since we do have a little bit of a tailwind. Uh, I want to slow my airspeed as much as possible. So I am going to put in uh, that third flap setting, so I have 30 degrees of flaps. <clears throat> we're now a little below the glide slope, so we need to slow our descent rate a little bit. You can see that we are coming in at about 65 to 70 knots, which is good. We're back on the glide slope. We're descending close to a rate of 400 feet per minute. So we just got to level up with this airstrip and finalize our landing still on the glide slope coming in on final gonna slow our pull down our throttle a little bit because it is a little uh, we were descending at a little too shallow of a rate here we come start to rotate pull back the throttle and land. Push in the brakes and we'll take off on this first taxiway. Taxiway Charlie 2. <clears throat> it's a pretty narrow uh, runway. It's fine for a small aircraft like this, but I still prefer the, the wider runways. 
turning off on this first taxiway. So we need a contact ground now, so we'll acknowledge the handoff. So I tuned my standby to one point or one two four decimal five seven. We're gonna switch that over, and now we're just gonna request parking. To uh, we'll just do the east parking. Charlie 2 uniform is our taxiway instructions. We're going to acknowledge that. General Aviation Parking via taxiway Charlie 2 uniform. Cessna Alpha Foxtrot Mike. As you can see, also, I turned off my landing light. I turned on my taxi light. Uh, we're going to taxi to the ramp, so strobe light, we can turn that off now. Flaps, we need to retract those to the up position. Taxi lights on, which I turned on. Landing lights off and then max speed of about 20 knots for our taxi and transponder we can set that to one two zero zero again elevator trim you also will set that for takeoff position and our taxi to ramp checklist is complete so we'll taxi to the ramp as you can see we are on taxiway charlie 2 and we will be then going to taxiway uniform. <clears throat> At this airport, I actually don't believe that uniform is clearly marked. So that's another reason to use those airport diagrams that you can get from airnav.com uh, because it'll list where various taxiways such as taxiway uniform are. This is another narrow taxiway. Start turning. And now actually we are on taxiway uniform. I don't know why they don't have that listed. Uh, right here is this east parking, general aviation parking. So we're just going to find a nice parking spot in there to uh, park and turn off our engine and call it a flight. Um, slow down a little bit. Hyper November 6953 Juliet, ready to copy IFR clearance to Kilo Bravo Delta 6. All right, I'm going to turn here. Juliet, Hope this uh, truck doesn't hit me. That would be a great way to end a video. Who's getting into an accident with a fueling truck. <clears throat> and we can select a nice little parking spot here, so I'll just select this one. So we are parked. We can uh, see our parking job isn't terrible right there. And now we are done with our taxi, so we can do our shutdown checklist. Shut down checklist, parking brake on, so control period to turn on our parking brake, and that just pulls out that lever right there. Throttle, we're going to set that to idle, which it is. Fuel pump, we can turn that off down here. We'll actually zoom down there so you can see. Fuel pump off. Avionics switch, we can turn that off. All the avionics come off. Taxi lights, off. Nav lights, we'll turn those off. Pedo heat, off. Mixture fuel flow to cut off, and you just heard the engine cut out. Magneto switch, we can uh, grab that and turn that to the off position. Beacon, we'll also turn that off. Panel lights, we'll turn those off. Battery switch and alternator switch, off. So we are back to cold and dark in our aircraft. Everything is shut off, and we have safely arrived at Grand Forks International Airport. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, please subscribe to the video if you do like these. Uh, I will try to do more. Also, one thing I want to do is I want to get suggestions from you guys on where to fly. So I'm not always flying at familiar airports to me, but so you can see airports that you're familiar with and you can see flying around what, what you choose. So uh, 
please tell me what you want to see. If you want, if you like seeing some of that instructional or uh, informational information, like I was showing you with uh, some of the web pages that I use to plan out my flights. If you want to see more of that, please let me know and I'll make more videos on that. Uh, tell me what airports you want me to fly from and to. Try to keep everything relatively um, short distance, kind of uh, keeping in mind that we're trying to, I'm trying to keep everything uh, visual flight rules, uh, private pilot license type flights. So please uh, keep things uh, shorter like that, but give me your suggestions, what you want to see. If you don't want to see VFR, if you want to start seeing instrument flight uh, or if you want to see bigger fl planes or whatnot, I, I want to cater to you guys. So please tell me no tell me what you want to see. Uh, leave comments. Um, please subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys next time.